So Nasty Plot actually asked us in my Discord. I'd be interested in hearing your perspective on the thought process that goes into crafting a personal playstyle. How do you look at some aspect of your gameplay and decide whether something should be changed or whether it should be leaned into? I asked because I watched a lot of solos and I watched two different players play the same matchup, even against the same opponent, and the approaches and decision making will be noticeably different. So I feel that if the answer to making a playstyle is simple, something simple like just two good risk reward. There'd be more overlap in their game. <laughs> well, just uh, like to just comment on what you said. Well, usually my actually I actually have a good answer for you. It is both just do good risk risk reward and not at the same time. This this subject is something that is very complicated in in fighting games. That I know a lot of people lean into a ton. Like a lot of people lean into like it's like kind of like glamorized like kind of perspective. Uh, like like I want my playstyle to be like this or like this. Or I'll never play like this or that sort of thing. Right? There's like a ton of people who do that. In fact, I was guilty of that. I used like, especially like when I first really started competing and playing and getting like trying to get better. A lot of the time, if you play like kind of wild, <laughs> well, I mean, if you still play wild, people give you shit. But like back then, like if you played wild, you were just like a net player and you're scrubby and like whatever. And I took that to heart because <laughs> I only net play. So I specifically like be in my game plan like try to be as slow or like as like calculated as possible yeah corn, <laughs> corn ball mashing it's close to be very blunt with you my mentality sucks to think like that i'm going we're gonna start this in two different ways a lot of people just to clarify again idolize the concept of a play style and i'm gonna blow this because this this one's like already we're kind of getting into a messy subject you know, maybe they really value like how they always play slow or clean or like footsies based, right? And then they're like, they see someone who just like I ding all the time, or they're just like running at you, or they just run away, and that's it. Like, there's no middle ground, right? People will be like, oh, like my playstyle's so clean, it's so sick, and they're random, they're, you know, cornball mashing. This dude has no idea what's going on. This format, this subject, right here, where they idolize the concept of a playstyle, is usually, in my opinion, a product of kind of not being able to tell skill sets as directly. So like, if someone's playing slow or like kind of calculated, usually you just at least associate some level of experience or like fluidity. Most people are gonna be like, well, like, you know, they're not panicking, they're just kind of sitting there, like watching, what you know, whatever. And then like, you know, the other person's like going ham, they're running around, they're like, you know, they they, <laughs> they look like they're panicking or they're like flailing, I guess. But here's, I know I've, I've really run that concept in the ground a lot, but here's the problem. If you stick, oh, purely to one or the other, you directly hamper your progress. This is why it's actually pretty bad. To be very good at fighting games, you have to incorporate aspects of both. You cannot just do one, right? So like usually when, when we talk about play styles, it's basically just linear down to like, is this player trying to play like footsies or are they just trying to like play rock, paper, scissors? But to me, if I was to summarize like a lot of like how people tend to play fighting games, it usually boils down into that. What is it? Like your chivalry code, your, your like fucking samurai code that like you'll never like do run forward throw or some shit from nothing in neutral. Then they never expect it or they, they, they'll they just like never expect it because like you just never do it. A player who values footsies does not ever force situation they never expect to force a change <laughs> code in a video game is crazy that's that's actually like low-key a lot of people have like honorable dueling systems in fighting games i mean there's obviously like funny ones where people are like you know how dare you you spamming combos there are people who are even like you know oh i win with a low tier character and if you're winning with a high tier character that means nothing but if i win with a low tier character that means i'm godlike because of my code right <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> my my fucking samurai code. Well, like obviously, like some people in the community care about different things. But like as a competitor, if you have mentality like that, you're like fucking yourself so bad. It's such like an unhealthy mentality to have. Here's what happened. All right, they associated options or actions that are cringe, cringe. <laughs> and won't use them because they think. The option or action is 
cranks. cranks. I hope you're following me. So like some people like never use dust because it's cranks. When you have all these options, right? Like when you, when you're thinking about making a playstyle, that involves options that you, options or actions that you think are cranks. You do like charge dust. You know, you may, like, someone else may think it's cringe. Basically, you can see in either case, just by, like, associating something negatively, there's, like, a door and you just, like, close it. You're like, oh, damn, I can't get in. <laughs> yeah, like, mashing is a great example. Like, people are like, why are you mashing? When it's like, if you don't represent mashing, you aren't even playing defense correctly. I'm going, I'm going to blow your mind here, okay? Are you guys ready? Are you sitting down? Maybe drink some water first. I'm going to, I'm going to take a sip to you. Everyone has their own unique playstyle. Even if you try to apply someone else's playstyle, you will always have bits of your own. I may, in some points, not want to mash at a specific timing, whereas some other players will just always mash. They don't give a fuck, right? Like, there's like, there's some players who like, they backdash every time on Wake Up. And then there are players who just like, they'll like never do anything. They like hunker down. Like it's like XCOM, right? You never can avoid the fact that like, you're going to have your own like, unique take on a playstyle, no matter what. You know, you can always watch someone and like take like, oh, I really like how like the pace they play at or like how they like to like, how they react. And then they try to like air throw, like stuff like that, right? Like that's always applicable. That's fine. But you have to understand that like you being the person you are, you are going to have unique decisions or, you know, <laughs> That's you. That's your- you're doing it. And this leads us to our next one, which is, you know, why do you have a personal playstyle? Don't you cows have the same spots exactly? So true. So, I can represent all of the options for you, right? Like, I can tell you, like, you know, in neutral you can do all these options and whatever. You may lean to one option or another for whatever reason. This is kind of like the beauty of fighting games, right? I can give you an example of what I usually value. I usually value mid-range characters that enabled me to play somewhat reactive, but also enabled me to kind of bully them on offense, right? I tend to lean towards options that are much more, like, built around, like, kind of holding space. Not exactly zoning, but, like, holding space. There's a big difference. Whereas, like, you know, someone like, like, KV, KV also plays assessment. KV tends to play a little more aggressive than me. Like, a little more focused on, uh, like, kind of rush down, like, kind of going close, like, forcing stuff with... Uh, Arbiter, or sorry, not Arbiter, uh, you know, Grave. Depending on the things you value or what you like, you are going to have your own unique playstyle that comes from it, right? The only thing that's a detriment to you is if you never use an option. If you're like, like, oh, I'll never use this ever, then they'll just expect you to never use it. And then that's, that's it. That's the option that's off the table. And a lot of people get caught up in the middle there where they're just like, well, <laughs> I'm not gonna do this scrubby, this scrubby thing because, you know, I want, you know, people will think I suck or like it'll look like I want to win or like whatever. To answer your question, in the context of matchups, right, some people may value different options than others. So like, for example, if you're playing like soul, you may find some people value movement. Some people value just like pressing buttons way more. Some people like value like oh can i like you know make big gambles to get in like once and then win some people value like well if i get in once and I, or if i build my strategy around getting in once then you know i may have no health by the time i get in then i may lose like these are not options that are like purely like just never use them it's just like you have to have a special mindset for them and the thing that matters for all of them is you have to have a strategy for it or a game plan involving it. um but depending on how you like, you know, how you think about the game usually dictates your decision making, right? Like once you're familiar with the matchup and everything in your character, like if you value your score, you're probably not going to be running at them mindlessly. Whereas if you think like, well, I just need to get in once and then I can RPS them and kill them, like whatever, match up be damned, you can do that too. Like I could not do that, but it doesn't make it any less valid. If you're just playing a playing the game, you'll probably have your own playstyle that, that comes around, right? Obviously there are ways that like can that lean your playstyle into specific ways. If having a good fire slash is gonna mean you're gonna press a good like fire slash or neutral, like that's to be expected, right? Like that's not even playstyle, that's like character stuff. You can tell them most about someone's playstyle by the way they show how they're willing to approach neutral, like above all else. Like it's really rare to find someone who's super ham in neutral, but super defensive when they get knocked down. Like it's super rare. Usually like if they're ham in neutral, usually their approach is pretty aggressive all around the board. It's rare to see clean players 
players are players that focus on playing clean take those kind of like big gambles, right? But they're not any less kind of like encouraged or like good. They're just situational. I noticed uh, someone in chat said that they have different playstyles across games and that's also normal. Depending on your character even, you may end up playing in a unique way just because like, you know, they the character enables you to play a way maybe you can't in other ways, right? Like if you're, if you don't have that option, you may not play that ham or that aggressive. There's like a, a funny story of like, if you guys know Manny Blaze from uh, Guilty Gear, from Xer, he is like literally known as like, like the most aggro player in existence. Like he just goes so fucking ham. When he has a DP, he cannot stop himself from using it. Or like if he has meter for super, he just, he will do it every time. You give him a character without a DP, he actually like plays hella <laughs> He plays hella slow and like hella footsies base. Like it's it's like jarring. Like it's like it's like a different person. <laughs> so like it's it's totally it's totally possible, right? Thanks a lot for listening. So I hope this helped. I hope this answered your question. Or not. I hope this answered your question. Nasty. We're gonna boot up some strides.